Hello and welcome to Sweden. So today, I'm going to be bringing you on a trip back to when I spent a week in Sweden and we're going to be exploring some of the nature walks that we've gone through. Oh, and not forgetting this beautiful landscape that you see at the back. This is what has been inspiring some of the work that's been in my sketchbook and I'm going to also bring you through that because I think that nature is really the best form of inspiration. After going on my walks, one of the things that I really want to do is to capture the feelings and the textures that I actually saw being outdoors. I brought my current Dash Wax Pastels. They are water soluble and when I was packing my travel supplies, I didn't think that I was going to use them a lot because I hadn't really had the opportunity to use them much in the studio. In the studio at home, I tend to be doing a lot more painting for work so they are for classes and I don't really get the chance to play as much and I thought that I was going to pack the current dash just to see how I would be experimenting with them and I didn't expect that I actually enjoyed using them so much because they were so easy to pull out, doodle and then wet them to get different textures and effects. Now one of the things around painting loosely I find that has been really helpful especially when it comes to landscapes is to eliminate the green. I like to just paint and do landscapes in colours that don't reflect green which is the typically majority of the colours in nature but I felt like by injecting my own colours it gives me this sense of autonomy as an artist to decide how I want the colours to turn out and be. 
Now, today's episode, I wanted to take you on a ride through a class that I did together with this gouache artist that I really admire. And I actually got some feelings and thoughts as I was taking up that class. So I'm back at the studio and my mind is still filled with all of those beautiful flowers just sprouting out. We don't have seasons in Singapore so I really feel like I miss out on being able to see flowers transition between the seasons. In Singapore being tropical, we get well the greens all year round which is really really lovely but I wish I get to see the different flowers moving across the different seasons. So I actually really, really love this flower feel thing, which I've seen many sketchbook artists do. I am a huge fan of Denise Peters' work, and I found that she had a class on the Creative Bundle, which I was part of last year. And I thought, why not check out her class? So in today's episode, you're going to be watching me try out some of those things that I'm learning through her ebook. And while I'm doing that, because I haven't really done many tutorials in a while, there are some things and thoughts that have started to pop up and I started to notice. I am going to be sharing with you my perspective around imitation and inspiration. Sometimes when we are learning something, whether it's a style from another artist or whether we're trying to create specific ways of painting, some of these elements can be really, really blurred and it can impact the way we feel emotionally about our work, you know, how connected we feel with our art just because the more it looks like somebody else's art, the more we feel like it doesn't belong to us. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you my painting process, chatting with you as I'm going through Denise's class. I also have to say I'm really grateful to be able to try out different classes. You know, the internet is such that where you know there's so many different resources it's really really fun to see all the different possibilities and it also can be really really distracting when we find it difficult to cut off the noise and really pay attention to how our creative voice feels or needs to be heard I've been meaning to try something a little different lately and while I've been playing with gouache, I thought that it would be a great idea for me to try out painting some of these flower fields that I've been seeing in Sweden. Now, one of the things that I knew in my mind as I was trying out this was that I saw it somewhere on the internet. What it means is that I've been scrolling on Instagram or on YouTube and I've seen other artists try out painting these kind of flower fields. In fact, one of the artists that I'm really inspired by is this artist called Denise Peters. She does some really, really beautiful flower fields and I've been following her work for a while. When I was painting this, I was actually taking one of her classes that was within the creative bundle package that I had bought 
and I wanted to try out some of the techniques that she was using. I noticed that she was using gouache, so I was laying down a thicker consistency of gouache than usual, and typically I would be using watercolour which is a lot more fluid, and this was actually a new experience for me because it felt a lot drier and somehow it didn't have as much texture as I would have wanted. So I started adding in whites and I added in other variations of green to try and capture a background. Now, while you're watching me do this painting, I thought that I wanted to share with you my thoughts around gaining inspiration from other artists and also that fine line between inspiration and imitation. Sometimes, especially when we are still new in our journey and beginning, it can be very inspiring to see what others are doing and then try and mimic that because that way you can see how you can tweak or use the medium to create something meaningful and that was exactly how I started starting with tutorials where I would dive in and I would try out the various techniques and the various brushes that people recommended this really helped me to not only get to know the medium it also allowed me to see what the possibilities were when it came to learning watercolour I'm within my own journey following tutorial after tutorial and trying out so many different artist styles. One of the things that I noticed was I started to feel really nervous when I had to do a painting on my own. I felt really reliant on having to follow somebody else's steps and somebody else's formula and as a result I noticed that I didn't have much confidence when it came to trying to apply skills on my own. There was this fear of making a mistake or failing or uncertainty. It was almost as though I needed someone to hold my hand and tell me what the steps were so that I would not fail. Now, the moment I actually started to notice these feelings was when I realized that I had to change something in the way I was learning. I started to take a step back from tutorials and I think the more I did these tutorials and started to get inspired or imitate and mimic what I saw on the screen and was able to replicate some of these, the more I noticed that I couldn't rely on myself and instead I was relying on someone else. It's almost like, you know, a child depending on you to do something because they don't have the skills to be able to do that. And this is where it really got me reflecting into thinking about what was missing within myself and what I needed to build up in order for me to build up that confidence so that I could paint for myself or face a blank page and not feel afraid and I think one of the things that I was really afraid of was just wasting my time or this fear of the lack of productivity where I was spending that time and investing all of these materials especially cotton paper as you know and that made me feel really anxious in you know not being able to productively use these materials to produce a beautiful outcome and that being one of the things that hindered me the other bigger umbrella that really hindered me was probably the fear of failing the fear of not producing something that i knew was going to turn out a certain way you see when you look at a tutorial or when you are inspired by someone's work there is an outcome or a vision that you are moving towards so in a way it feels safe because you know that you're moving in that direction and even as you are moving through the ugly beginning of your work you still kind of feel secure that there's a chance that you could change this around and this person on the screen is going to tell you how to turn it around and when i was going through denise's course which by the way is an ebook so the lovely thing is that i had to read i had to figure things out and i had to kind of interpret what she was kind of sharing with me about her process so 
with an ebook and with a book, it feels a little bit different because a video actually shows you step by step and you can pause and all of that while in a book, it feels a little bit different. When I was doing this with Denise, I realized that I have grown in the way I've used tutorials. When I started, it was really a lot of mimicking and copying and I think all of our artistic journeys start off that way. It's very much like child development if you think about it where children also mimic and follow and copy what their parents are doing in order to learn and see what exactly the reaction is or how people will respond and this is all through copying because you see what others are doing and you kind of conform to that and I think that's really an important beginning that many of us have to go through in order for you to learn how to get your feet off the ground. Now, as you move on in your journey, this is where we start to transition into a different type of learning and it might move beyond copying and beyond mirroring what you see, but we start to go into a space where we suddenly want to assert some autonomy and start to get some independence on what exactly we hope for and what we want but we also face this problem of how do we get there and because we are so reliant on someone else showing us the ropes it can feel really hard to let go of you know your mom's hand and when I was going through this class together with Denise one of the things that I noticed that I've grown in with regard to looking at tutorials is that is that I no longer focus on what she's doing but I focus a lot more on how she's doing it. It's a little small little tweak between the what and the how. The how is really about the skills that are required, the techniques, the types of ways in which materials are being manipulated and then I look into my own toolkit and I see what I have and what I can do with it or whether it's even something that I want to do. On the other hand, the what is about taking a look at what the person is producing. So there is a small, thin, fine line there when we are learning through tutorials. Every time I do a floral class with Brush Movement Collective, which is a community I host, I often encourage my members to see the tutorial as a guide instead of a step-by-step -step tool. And this is so that they get to see that when I'm sharing everything that I'm doing within a tutorial, it's really about exploring the possibility rather than coming with an outcome. When you have the possibility or when you know the how, it's a lot easier to then generalize it and put it onto other things that you want to do or you want to explore. Now, when I was trying out this new way of painting with gouache, as you can see me doing in this video, I faced a lot of frustration with, you know, figuring out paint and water ratios, figuring out do I use a mid-tone or a light tone or a dark tone because, you know, I've been so used to painting with watercolour and as a result, all of these different frustrating things start to come out. And every time I face frustration, I notice that I am so tempted to go back into just copying step by step because I'm afraid again. I notice that fear again. So I wanted to bring up some of these experiences that I'm facing and feeling because as you are going through tutorials and you are learning, you might also be noticing some of these different things taking place as you are painting. I do feel that because we have got such a wide exposure in so many different types of art through social media, we have got an accelerated growth or an accelerated way of learning because our inspiration bank is so overloaded. We are constantly faced with new ways of using materials or new ways of doing things or even exposed to just new materials and new mediums in general. And as a result, I feel like while social media can be a bank of, you know, 
a lot of distractions and inspiration, it also has accelerated a lot of our growth and a lot of us actually learn at a much quicker pace because of social media and the exposure we have to all the different styles and ways in which people are doing things. And I think that when it comes to gaining inspiration, there is also a way in which we need to take responsibility for deciding the balance between how we want to make it our own and how much we want to engage with that artist's work. The more we mimic or the more we create an art piece that looks really similar to another artist's work, the less it becomes our own. And this means that our own identity as an artist can feel overshadowed by someone else's. This is where I want to ask you to reflect on how you would feel in that position where you find that your artwork no longer looks like something that you have created but rather an artist that you were inspired by. Now, when we talk about inspiration versus imitation, I feel like when the line goes to where it looks so much like the artist's work, it is a lot more in the bracket of imitation than inspiration. And inspiration should really be where you still are able to inject some of your own personality, your own emotion, the way you want to express, you know, whether it's in color or brush strokes or whichever types of mediums that you would like to add into your work to give it a look and feel that still remains yours. Now, every time I do my videos, I would love to hear your thoughts, what your views were as you were listening to me speak around the topic. I feel like imitation and inspiration has a very fine line of which I also find that everyone defines it in a different way. At the end of the day, I strongly believe that the way you feel about the originality of your work really depends on how much time and how it felt like as you were painting or creating, how connected we feel towards our art feels so much more important. And I think that's where it feels more on the bracket of inspiration rather than imitation. But you know, what I'm saying here is really just my opinion. Share with me your thoughts in the comments. Um, there is a lot of different topics that you know artists feel and I thought that by creating some of my opinions might be a good way for the community here to you know talk about things, share things a little bit more openly and that way people can also see that everyone's views has a place here. Thank you so much for being here with me. I cannot wait to see you next week.